Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Otto's Garage. It's time to sort out that center console. So what I've done is I have fitted the dash and I want to have something kind of here, which I can get the clocks in and things like that. So what I did was I just made up a cardboard template and we're gonna put some sides kind of down here. And that's kind of following the original line of the dash. But in any event, that's gonna go down there and that'll fix on the side of the tunnel, one of those each side. And then we'll have a panel in the middle. But rather than having that straight edge just dropping vertically down, what I actually decided to do was just change. So rather than having this dead straight boring action here, uh, it's going to have a kink in it. So um, <clears throat> this is the side that we've just been looking at. So that goes up against the dash. Uh, that's the back side, the pedal side, if you like. And this is the gear shift side. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a bent panel on this leading edge. And that will angle up, obviously, so we can get some gauges or whatever in there, some switches, things like that. But what, I'll, what I've done is I've cut two out with our good friend, uh, Mr. Grinder again. And we've used the uh, correct breathing apparatus and all that stuff there so that we can live to see another day. Um, and I've cut out three pieces. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a bend in this back piece. We're going to get a bend across it, which will replicate this point here. And then that will follow round like that. So I'll get that bent up and then you can see what I mean. Well, there it is. So I've put a couple of bends in it. Um, so that bottom long edge, that's where it's going to fix to the transmission tunnel. Uh, and this is the driver's side piece. So that'll go down into that corresponding part. And the same on the passenger side piece. That's again got that little bend onto the transmission tunnel there. Um, and then where this bend occurs here, that is in effect where the centre console uh, will be. So in effect, get that that way. You can kind of get an idea of how that's going to go together basically like that. So I'm going to take that to my fabricator and I'm going to get him to TIG weld all those corners up and then it'll make it kind of like into a box structure which we can then just slot over the top of that uh, uh, factory dash aperture if you like. Uh, afterwards then I'll be able to get this front piece and I'll be able to just determine where I want to put my uh, various holes in there which should be fine. Um, there's no reason why I can't drill that afterwards, but I'm going to get the, I'll get it made up first and then we'll know exactly where we can put our things like the uh, electric shut off switch and the uh, little trip switch, stuff like that. Mesh. So here we have some mesh. This is alley mesh and it is uh, kind of coated, plastic coated with black basically. And I'm going to use that to go in the holes in the bonnet. So what I've got is some cardboard. Nice and easy to work with. You can trim it just with a um, Stanley knife. Uh, straight edges to run against. Obviously you need a pen as well. And what I've managed to do with a bit of trial and error is make a nice cardboard bonnet vent. However... When that gets wet, it'll all go soggy and fall to shit. So what we're going to do is turn that cardboard vent into a metal black coated grill. As it came as a uh, coil for postage reasons, you know, it's all wound up. So what I've done is I've just kind of bent it down the edge of the table here, gone backwards and forwards, and that's kind of flattened it out nicely. So now we can use our cardboard template and basically I'm going to get some tin snips and we're going to see if we can't just cut that out uh, of a fashion. I'm going to go big with it. We can always trim it back and then we can offer it up and just see exactly how it's going to fit 
in the aperture on the car. Now to mark up that uh, grill uh, with the template is going to be a bit of a nightmare obviously because we've got black, black pen and black and black doesn't work very well. So what I'm going to do is use our good friend a bit of duct tape. We'll put a bit of duct tape over it in approximately the right position to the edge of the cardboard template and then we can mark up onto the duct tape and just cut through the duct tape and the grill all in one go. Okay, so you can see the uh, duct tape there. I've marked around it and that has now left us with a pattern. So I can cut that and I'm going to be a little bit generous. I'm not going to, I'm going to try and leave the line if I can because that'll just give us a little bit and we can trim it back all being well afterwards. So we'll cut around that and we'll see what we're left with. Using a pair of um, metalwork shears like this is ideal. Uh, it does cut very well and certainly cutting it with the um, masking tape on is a good idea. It kind of just keeps the shape of it as you go. So what I've done is I've managed now to get ourselves a final shape, which is pretty damn good. Um, a little bit curly still, but obviously that's the nature of the beast at the moment. But that is fitting nicely in there. And the good thing with the recess is this grill, when you cut it, razor sharp edges on it. Uh, so you've really got to watch your thumb and etc. when you're cutting that. But we've basically we've got a grill now. I'm going to take the tape off it, try and just straighten her out a little bit more, and then just see what she looks like when it's in the aperture there. <laughs> And there we have it, one black mesh grill, which is just the effect that I'm after. You get a cheeky peek of the engine inside, but it's uh, strong enough to resist anything uh, dropping on it or whatever. But anyway, that's one down, three to go. Just one other thing on this vent. Um, I've just had a look at that this morning, and of course, the it's basically expanded metal mesh. And if you look at it one way, it basically closes off. But if you look at it the other way, it's open. So I've set this now so that basically, I flicked it over so that when the air is going over the bonnet, it's gonna hopefully encourage warm air to be pulled up out of the bonnet. If I turn it the other way, it's gonna kind of have the effect of drawing it in. But the problem with that is it's also gonna draw in all the wet weather and everything as well. Uh, and I think it would be more beneficial to have the airflow going over it and helping to suck out that warm air inside the engine bay. So that's the way we're going to go with it. This is the one that I've been waiting for. Auto silicon hoses and I'm pretty sure that in here we have got a variety of, believe it or not, Silicon hoses. See if we can open that down there. Presto. Good, good, good. We don't want wine. Same old thing. So we've got some joiners in there. Uh, vacuum hose water feed hose, general top hose and some air line as well. So basically that is good news. We can get on and get the various components hosed up all being well. So this is invaluable. This is the workshop manual and this tells us where those pipes go to and where they come from. That's the throttle body obviously with all the various different um, pipes whether you know the coolant where it's coming from where air is going through blah 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 where the ventilation crankcase etc stuff like that is going to so that's got all the connections on the throttle body and then the other ones that i've got are also for the um that's the idle control valve so that again tells you where it comes from and where it goes to from the air filter, blah, 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 and outwards towards the uh, butterfly valve, whatever. All that's on there. And then the, that's a wiring one. This is the one that I really like. So this shows us a um, system 
which is basically all of the pipes running from the heater, the expansion bottle, into that manifold along the back of the engine, uh, off to the turbocharger, and obviously the radiator as well. Now in my instance, I haven't got a turbocharger coolant pipe, it is just oil cooled. So um, basically those ones will just be plugged off, but that's great. And then the other one that I've got, which shows it in a little bit more detail, is a thermostat housing. And again, that shows us where the different ports are going to out of that thermostat housing. So that's just simplified everything, and it means that I can crack on and get the correct um, plumbing in situ. So I'm going to get all of those pipes in first, get them all cut to length, and then what we'll do is we'll just go around afterwards and we'll put the hose clips on once we know everything's correct. I don't want to keep doing them up and taking them off again afterwards. So let's get on with it. I've started to fit some of those hoses now. Basically, we've gone with blue for air, like we said before, I think. Uh, black is water. And then I am going to get a red one because that little hole down there is the breather um, off the crankcase. And that's obviously got oil contamination air in it. And that gets sucked up into the underside of the throttle body. So I'm going to do that one in red so that we know just looking at any of the hoses exactly what they do. Uh, obviously down near the heater hose, it actually says it on it anyway, so that's cool. But basically you can see over there, I've started to try and see how the water pump is gonna come out and connect up onto the engine. Um, I've still got a hole to make in the top of the bulkhead there for the other water pump return. And then we've got the, uh, the top hose connector and the bottom hose connector. So there's a bit more work to do. I still can't put the radiator back in until I've basically got the oil cooler pipes fitted down there. So there's still a little bit of work on that one, but it is getting there bit by bit. And uh, the other thing that I have managed to do is I've managed to make that last vent for the, uh, so the last three vents for the bonnet. So that's cool. And that will just need uh, them putting down with some adhesive and then uh, that'll be the bonnet finished as well. I've got that uh, aluminium centre console back from Paul, uh, who's uh, fabricated it, welded it together, tigged it up. Let's have a look at it. And there it is. So basically you can see how those edges are all being welded. Uh, I've got this strip across the top. So basically that now sits on top of the surround on the dash, uh, the factory dash there. And we've got our holes for the uh, ignition shut off and the uh, brake bias in there. I've just uh, taken it out of the car. I did drill a few holes in it in the side, each side. So these ones down the bottom will um, go onto the transmission tunnel. Uh, and then this one here screws into the side of the dash pod, basically. So what I've got to do now is drill a few holes in the front here for things like the starter and the pumps, etc., stuff like that. And then I'm just going to have a look and see what's, um, what we might put down the bottom. This zone here is a little bit limited because we've got our handbrake in this position. Uh, so any kind of switches down there, I don't want to be using quickly. You know, they're okay if you're static, but we don't want to be like trying to fumble around the back there on the fly. Now I've had a bit of an idea because uh, this is the oil pressure gauge and basically that's a mechanical one. So that runs directly off the pressure of the oil. We've got no electronics, it's purely mechanical, and I needed that because I don't trust the electronic things on things like that. However, uh, I have got a pair of um, LED electronic temperature gauges, one for the oil and one for the water. They're not so critical as oil pressure, obviously. So what I'm thinking is to have the oil pressure gauge located dash uh, right in front of my eye, alongside the rev counter uh, so that's behind the steering wheel but then maybe putting the leds into the center console so i've just made this up now this has got our start uh, isolator sorry switch in there battery isolator and then that's the um adjuster for the for the brake bias so what i didn't want to do is have switches alongside here that i'm fiddling around with that and suddenly knock the bloody um ignition off or something like that so I'm thinking perhaps that we should put the starter down here um, and the uh, the ignition switch, starter, uh, pump switch, and then I think there's also going to be the um, 
uh, main the headlights sort of switch or something like that. But I'm thinking they're down there. They're not really. They don't need to be used during any kind of uh, driving, anything like that. They'll be purely put on at the beginning, and then kind of it's out of the way. The gear lever's a bit higher up. You're not going to just knock them accidentally. So I think we might go down there. But I'm going to drop the console back in the car, and then we can have a look and just see exactly how they interface with the uh, the gear lever and the handbrake there as well. Okay, so that's got that back in, and I've just stood the gear lever up just in in you know so we can see where we are so looking at it from the driver's eye view um it doesn't really matter that these gauges aren't in line with your eye you know you can see them enough the led will be bright enough down there so i think that's cool i think we'll go with having the gauges in there and then um, there's plenty of space in the back here we'll put the starting mechanisms there and they're safe and they're kind of out of the way they're not going to get knocked um because like I say, if you're, you know, if you're driving, you're trying to adjust this at the same time, you might just flick the blooming thing off, which would be kind of disastrous on a world record run up the hill. OK, I've cut out the gauge holes there and I've used a bimetal saw hole. This is a 51 mil and the gauge should take about a 52 to 53 mil. But what I find with these is that if you go to exactly the size that you're after, because of those teeth, it'll basically make the hole too big. So go a mil or two less than you need, and then just whiz around the aperture with a little circular file, something like that. And that basically will just um, open it all out to the right size. You can drop your gauge in and then just see, make sure it all fits. So that's that. Uh, below it, I've marked out the position of the switches, and we're gonna have the uh, starter button here, ignition, pumps, and then the lights over on the right hand side so basically uh i've just yeah obviously marked those out and then just drop the center punch that's great you know when you press that it clicks itself you haven't got to hit it with a hammer basically they're great tools they are so i've just done that with the center punch I'm going to drill some pilot holes in there now and i think we need a uh, 12 mil uh drill for taking the little uh, well, I don't know what kind of switch is that. I don't know. So like a click-clack, whatever. Toggle switch, that's the word I'm looking for. So, toggle switch will go in there in a 12mm hole. Those three will be 12. This one's going to be a bit bigger. Uh, I'll measure that off the back of the switch on the panel that came with the uh, starter thing. Another little tip for you. When you're drilling alley, uh, because of the nature of it, it sucks the heat out of everything. It's a right pig. Sometimes you'll just spin around on the surface and try and grind it with a drill bit. Um, anyway, when I was up at Paul's today, the alley fabricator, he just gave me a top tip. He just said, just use some WD. And what I've done there is I've just soaked it on the drill bit. So as it, as it uh, drills, it's always dropping down onto the workpiece. You know, it's always lubricating it. And it really does make it a piece of piss when you come to drill it. Um, this is my WD here in our Easy Antibacterial Cleanser bottle. I just bought some bulk and then just squirt it. It's much cheaper doing it that way than getting an aerosol. And the other thing that he did say, and I was well impressed with that as well, is flap wheels. Put some WD on your flap wheel before you work the alley. And he says it'll stop it clogging up because what tends to happen is people chuck those away because they go blunt in effect. Uh, this one was second hand, but if you put a bit of WD on it as new, it'll stop it clagging up like that. And uh, you'll get much better value for money out of your flap wheels. Kaboosh. And there we have it. So, we've got our gauge holes on the top, our hole for the uh, bias adjuster for the brakes there. This is the master cutoff switch, FIA switch, uh, start button, and then we've got three on the side there, which I'm going to use for the ignition, um, as we said before, and then the um, pumps and the lights. Um, this one down here, I'm going to put a horn button on, um, really just to comply with MOT. I'm not really planning on using the horn too much, to be fair. And obviously if it's down there it's not a super emergency but in any event we've got a horn button down there and i've just put three others in because i need a reverse sorry fog light switch in the back <coughs> for the back lights 
So one of those will be a fog light switch. <clears throat> Not sure about the other two, but I figured I might as well put the holes in now. We can get it all powder coated and then basically we haven't got to mess around with drilling it in afterwards. So that is our centre console in. Um, so I'll drop that down to Andy at um, uh, powder coat in Shropshire and he can get that done. I'm going to get it done in black. I did do an R about leaving it in alley and polishing it, but I think there's just a bit too much going on with the gold here and then the red lever. And, uh, you know, it is a fashion statement after all. Well, having that centre console uh, dash thing, me jig, whatever the hell you want to call it, made, the next thing really to tackle is the instrument binnacle. Uh, currently, we've obviously got the heater hoses, uh, sorry, the heater controls up there, but I need um, this piece put in here, and I'm going to do that in alley as well. They are going to stay alley. We like the contrast of the, the silver on the black there. Um, the only issue that I've got at the moment is that I'm still waiting for the rev counter speedo unit to arrive. Uh, and until I've got that, I can't cut any holes in anything. Um, but I guess I can at least make the um, the alley plate so that fits into that dash aperture anyway. Get that done and then we can cut some holes in it when the other stuff arrives. Right, two hours ago, I nipped down to see Andy at Powder Coat in Shropshire and uh, dropped the uh, dash console off with him. Uh, obviously it is not going to be done this week there's plenty of uh, other stuff that he's got to sort out so we've cracked on with the hoses and uh, during that uh, time um, Andy opened the door and came back with this and there it is so number one I'm bloody impressed with how quickly he's turned it around number two I'm bloody impressed with the job that he's done on it that um, kind of like leatherette look this is industrial black and it kind of just wrinkles a little bit as it sets in the oven. So um, I'm very pleased, obviously, with that. So what we'll do now is at some stage in the near future, we'll have to get the switches put into it and then we'll drop that into the final resting place in the car. But yeah, that's awesome. We love it. Silicon hoses. Started putting those in and this is where we've got to so far. So basically, this is the water pump one. Uh, cut that hole down through the top of the bulkhead down into the water pump underneath. We saw that before. And we've got these really quite nice um, hose joiners from uh, Auto Silicon Hoses. Um, so I quite like those. And um, that is the uh, hose that comes off the, the bottom of the water rail around the front of the engine, if you like. Um, but yeah, these are a nice bit of kit, nice touch just having that logo on that and you just can basically connect all those different bends up together. So we've got a 45 degree going to come up out of this one here and then I'll join that over the top of the alternator and then we've got to connect down into our water pump um, blanking tube down that position there where the water pump used to go. I've just loaded that uh, console into its final resting place and this is what she looks like. So, there it is. And I've just temporarily put a couple of the uh, uh, switches in there. That's the master switch and the brake part. But yeah, I'm absolutely loving the finish on that and it just looks right. So um, the next job to do really is to try and get some of that wiring finalized we get some of the switches into that uh, central console panel and then we should be able to get it fixed in its final resting place completely but for now it's going to stay there because at least it won't get knocked about uh, and then i'll need to work on that dashboard above the steering column which is going to have the clocks in it so happy days kaboosh This is the Turbo Boost control valve. Mac valves, decent quality kit. Uh, and this is basically it. It's quite a small unit. Three port valve. What it does, it takes the uh, atmospheric pressure, uh, the boosted pressure, and then it goes on to the turbo actuator as well. Um, and basically then it can control the wastegate rather than the wastegate just opening and closing willy-nilly that actually lets it progressively open i think it does but in any event we need one and it's going on
And there's the little boost valve fixed up with a variety of snakes going off to and from the turbo. So that's all cool. Uh, still needs a bit of wiring on it. I think we're going to have to spend another evening doing some wiring. Um, this hose down here, which I did want to have in red, this was the breather off the uh, engine breather, basically, from the sump. I couldn't do that. They don't make this stuff in red anymore, but it does need to be fluoro lined, which is what that red is in there. And then we've basically got a tight elbow, and that's coming across. And we've got to get another tight elbow under here to get it up onto the um, throttle body. So that's a bit tricky. I can't get that one finished at the moment. Uh, and then the other one is this lead on the top here goes to the manifold air pressure sensor, which I haven't mounted yet. So that's another little one to do. Um, we've got an elbow off the return from the bottom of the breather bottle. That's going to go across and connect onto this one back down to that manifold there again. So we're getting there bit by bit, but there are a lot of hoses on these engines, as you can see. Uh, and I'm quite glad I went with this blue for air and black for water. It does make it a little bit easier. Uh, bottom hose, I've got to get another 90 to get in underneath the um, turbo inlet down there. So that's going to be another purchase, I fear. But um, it's got to be done. We're kind of committed now, aren't we, guys? Right, that's it for another episode of Otto's Garage. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, we are progressing, as we said. It's all coming together now, isn't it? Uh, thanks for watching. Um, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next episode. See you soon. Bye-bye now.